One of the leading causes of dissatisfaction with a generator purchase is under capacity, not having enough power to do the job or jobs you need to do. And the worst time to learn that you don't have enough power is when the generator you just bought isn't up to the job. In order to choose the right generator, you need to think ahead and ask yourself a few key questions. The first one's pretty basic. What kind of power do you need? A conventional generator could be a cost-effective solution if you're just running lights or motor-driven appliances. But if you need to power devices that use sophisticated microprocessors, you're going to want to look at an inverter. We have a whole other program devoted to helping you understand the differences, so you can choose whether a generator or an inverter is right for you. This video was created to help you decide how much generator is enough, and that involves asking yourself a couple more questions. First, how much power do you need? Second, how will you use that power? To calculate your needs, you need to first identify the power requirements of all the devices you plan to run. You can usually find the unit's running amperage power requirements on the identification plate or in the owner's manual, or by using an appliance load tester, which you can find at many hardware stores, or on Yamaha's Outdoor Power website. Make a list of the power requirements of all the things you might want to run at the same time. Many tools and appliances consume much more power when they're starting than when they're running. This is especially true with motorized tools where the starting amperage is way higher than the running amperage. But, and this is an important but, manufacturers almost never list the startup amperage for their products. Starting amperage is often the straw that breaks the camel's back, or should we say, throws the circuit breaker. Starting takes up to three times the amount of power as running. To estimate starting amperage, multiply the running amperage by three. Now multiply the amps times the volts to arrive at the wattage. Now, total the power requirement for each of the tools and appliances you expect to be running simultaneously. Keep in mind that you can't predict when certain devices will automatically turn on, like a refrigerator or furnace blower which operate on thermostats. This is the maximum power draw. This total should give you a good idea of how much generator you need. Here's a tip. Oftentimes, the actual wattage varies from manufacturer's published data. So adding an extra 10% to your total is a good rule of thumb. Yamaha's website also has tables and worksheets that enable you to plan your generator needs. But remember, the amounts on these pages are averages and should not be used in place of actual data. When you're going through this process, the last thing you want is a less is more mindset. Think of all the things you might want to power, then add the one more thing you didn't think about. Just like disaster planning, these kinds of decisions are best made ahead of time. These guidelines should help you understand more accurately just how much generator you really do need so you can buy the right unit and be just as satisfied with your decision as you will be with a dependable, reliable Yamaha generator or inverter you choose. To find out more about Yamaha generators and inverters, visit our website or stop by your local Yamaha dealer who will be happy to help you choose the right unit to meet your needs, whatever they might be.